Make This Theater Productions presents Sherlock Holmes and A Scandal in Bohemia. This production proudly sponsored by Joshua Wall of The Crew Real Estate. Are you or someone you know considering buying, selling, or investing in real estate? If so, better call Wall. And now I know Dr. Watson's waiting for us, so let's go in and join him. Come in, come in, come in. Good evening, Dr. Watson. Good evening. You're quite muffled up tonight, I see. Overcoat, scarves and gloves, slip them off and come and join me by the fire. Thanks, Doctor. Quite a chill in the air tonight. Yes, there is indeed. Well, Doctor, I hear tonight's story centered around the activities of a brilliant and beautiful woman. <laughs> yes, my boy. Her name was Irene Adler. But I never knew Holmes to refer to her by any other name than the woman. She sounds mighty intriguing. How did you happen to meet up with her? Well, I'll tell you the story from the beginning. One night, it was on the 20th of March, 1888 to be exact, I was returning home from a visit to a patient when my steps led me through Baker Street. Since my marriage, I hadn't seen much of Sherlock Holmes and... And you couldn't resist stopping by 221B, I'm sure, Doctor. Of course I couldn't. As I stood outside the well-remembered door, I looked up at the lighted windows and saw the tall, spare figure of my old friend pass twice in dark silhouette against the blind. He was pacing the room swiftly, eagerly, with his head sunk on his chest and his hands clasped behind him. To me, who knew his every mood and habit, his attitude and manner told their own story. He was hot on the scent of some new problem. I rang the bell, and a few moments later, found myself standing before him. Marriage suits you, Watson. You look in splendid shape. Yes, Holmes. I'm feeling very well, thanks. And in practice again, I see. You didn't tell me you'd gone back into the harness. Oh? How do you know? Elementary, my dear chap. If a gentleman walks into my room smelling of iodoform with a black mark of nitrate of silver on his right forefinger and a, a bulge on the left side of his hat to show where he has hidden away his stethoscope, I would be dull indeed if I did a pronouncement once to be an active member of the medical profession. <laughs> Same as ever, Holmes. Oh, by the way, I'm, uh, I'm not interrupting you, am I? Yes, you are, old fellow, but it is a most welcome interruption. You're working on a new case. <laughs> it looks like it. This letter arrived by last post today. It's undated and has neither signature nor address. Read it. Oh, well, uh, we'll call upon you tonight at a quarter to eight o'clock. A gentleman who desires to consult you upon a matter of the very deepest moment. Your recent services to one of the royal houses of Europe have shown that you are one who may safely be trusted. This account of you we have from all quarters received. Be in your chambers, then, at that hour. And do not take it amiss if your visitor wears a mask. <laughs> Great Scott! It all sounds very mysterious. What do you imagine it means? <laughs> well, look carefully at the note, Watson. What do you deduce from it? Oh, well, the man who wrote it was presumably well-to-do. Uh, such paper couldn't be bought for under half a crown a packet. And it's peculiarly strong and stiff. Peculiar, yes, that's the very word. It's not an English paper at all. Now hold it up to the light. You notice anything? Yes, uh, there's a large E and a small G. Mm-hmm. Oh, and a large G with a small T woven into the texture of the paper. And what does that suggest to you? Uh, the name of the maker, no doubt, or perhaps his monogram. No, 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 not at all, my dear fellow. The large G with small T stands for Geschelschaft, which is German for company. Uh, and the E-G? Egria? Mm-hmm. It's in a German-speaking country in Bohemia. It's not far from Carlsbad. Uh, so the paper was made in Bohemia? Undoubtedly. And the man who wrote that note is a German. How do you know that? Observe the curious construction of the sentence. This account we have from all quarters received. Now, a Frenchman or a Russian could not have written that. It's a German who is so discourteous to his verbs. There's your client now. I'd better go, Holmes. No, no. Uh, unless you, you have to. Well, uh, I could stay. Then, my dear chap, by all means, please stay. I'm I'm lost without my Boswell. And this promises to be interesting. I told Mrs. Hudson to let our mass visitor come upstairs unannounced. 
Come in. Good evening, sir. You, uh, you received my note? Yes, indeed. Come in, won't you? And sit down. This is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. You may say anything before him that you would say to me. Now, whom have we the honor to address? You may address me as uh, Count von Kram. How do you do, sir? You must excuse this mask that I wear. The august person who employs me wishes his agent to be unknown to you, and I may confess at once that this title by which I have just called myself is not exactly my own. I was well aware of that fact, sir. You see, Mr. Holmes, the matter I am about to discuss implicates the great house of Ornstein, hereditary kings of Bohemia. Uh, that not escape me either, sir. In fact, if you state your case, I shall be better able to advise you, your majesty. How? How did you? Yes, yes, I am the king. Why should I attempt to hide it? Why, indeed? I shall remove the mask. There, Mr. Holmes. I have traveled incognito from Prague for the express purpose of consulting you. Then pray consult. Briefly, the facts are these. Some five years ago, during a visit to Warsaw, I made the acquaintance of the well-known adventuress Irene Adler. Irene Adler? We know of her, Your Majesty. Uh, look her up in the index for me, will you, Watson? It's right beside you on the desk there. I imagine that her name would not be unfamiliar oh, to you. Here we are, here we are. Uh, a. Abrahams, Acton Green, Hatchet Murders, Adler. Splendid. Hemmed file, old chap. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Irene Adler, born in New Jersey in the United States of America in 1858. Contralto, born in New Jersey. Prima Donna, Imperial Opera of Warsaw. Retired from operatic stage, currently living in London. Quite so. And here's a recent notation. <laughs> Your Majesty, as I understand, became entangled with this young person. Wrote some very compromising letters, and it's not desirous of getting those letters back. Precisely so. But how could you? Was there a secret marriage? No. No legal papers or certificates? No. Then I fail to follow Your Majesty. If this young lady should produce her letters for blackmailing purposes, how is she to prove their authenticity? There is a handwriting. That could be a forgery, Your Majesty. But it was private note paper. Stolen. My own seal. Imitated. My photograph. Bought. But... We were both in the photograph. Oh. Yes, that's very bad. Your Majesty has indeed committed indiscretion. Did you inscribe this photograph, Your Majesty? Yes, Dr. Watson. I am afraid that I did. Good gracious me. Mr. Holmes, it must be recovered. Perhaps if you were to pay enough, the photograph might be bought. She refuses to sell. Stolen, then. Five attempts have been made. Twice, burglars in my pay ransacked her house. Once we diverted her luggage when she traveled. Twice, she has been waylaid. There has been no result. Oh dear. It's quite the pretty little problem. It is a deadly serious one to me. Your Majesty, what does Miss Adler intend to do with the photograph? To ruin me. How, sir? Well, I am about to be married to the second daughter of the King of Scandinavia. She is a very soul of delicacy. A shadow of a doubt as to my conduct would bring the matter to an end. And Irene Adler threatens to send the photographs to your fiancé, I suppose. Yes, and she will do it. Rather than let me marry another woman, there are no lengths to which she would not go. No. Are you sure that she hasn't already sent it, Your Majesty? I am sure. And why? She said she would send it on the day my betrothal is publicly announced. That day will be next Monday. <laughs> Splendid. We still have three days. Your Majesty will, of course, stay in London for the present. Yes, certainly. You will find me at the Langham Hotel, registered as Count von Kram. Hey, just two questions before you leave. What are they? Is the photograph large or small? Quite large. And it was a heavy frame. I see. And what is Irene Adler's London address, please? Bryony Lodge, Serpentine Avenue, St. John's Wood. Thank you, Your Majesty. Good night. And I trust we shall soon have some good news for you. I am placing all my hopes in you, Mr. Holmes. Good night. Good night, Dr. Watson. Good night, Your Majesty. Fascinating problem, Holmes. I wish I could help you with it. <laughs> you can, my dear chap. I shall be glad for your company. Well, uh, what's our first move, Holmes? Mm, a good night's rest. We'll meet here at ten o'clock tomorrow morning. And then? Then, my dear fellow, we'll see what we can find about Miss Irene Adler, late of the Warsaw Imperial Opera Company, and at present residing in Bryony Lodge, Serpentine Avenue, St. John's Wood. <laughs> Well, Holmes, I guess the examination of Bryony Lodge didn't prove very illuminating. No. <laughs> a bijou residence that represents the essence of dignified suburbia, but tells us very little about the owner. I think a visit to the local public house might prove more instructive. Oh, come on, old chap. I see the door of the coach and horses fighting us across the road. Well, 
Our disguises shouldn't cause any suspicion. That's why I suggested them. In the character of a couple of stable hands, I felt that we might inspire confidence. This is a horsey neighborhood, and there's a wonderful sympathy and Freemasonry among their fraternity. Ah, here we are. But let me do most of the talking. Yes, I will. I'm sure that your accent will be more convincing than mine. Let's go in, shall we, Doctor? Pepper the bartender with a few questions? Well, what be, mateys? Half a ball and more, please. How about you, Charlie? I'll have the same. Ah, oh, two half of old mark. That'll be a tenner. Oh, have a drink with us, Governor. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Or love a Guinness. You blokes near around here. Oh, yeah. We just come on from Clapham. Clapham, eh? Well, here's looking at you. You hunting for jobs? Yes, that's right. We was told Miss Adler come across Briny Lodge needed a new coachman and a groom. Well, it's the first I've heard of it, but it might be true. Have you been over there to ask? No, not yet. We thought we'd find something out about the old girl first. Uh, <laughs> she ain't no old girl, matey. She's the prettiest young thing you ever saw into a bonnet, and that's a fact. You know her, Governor? Yeah, of course I know her. Used to drive a carriage, I did, before I come and work here. And what's she like? Well, as nice a little lady as you'll find, chum. Work your heart? No, no, she lives quiet like. Goes out singing at concerts once in a while. Rest of the time, it's money for gin. She goes out for a drive in the park every day at five and comes back to dinner at 6.30. Rest of the time's your own. Oh, she ain't married, you say? No, no, but she's got a bloke what comes to see her all the time. He's a barrister. Nice gentleman. Mr. Jeffrey Norton's his name. Good looking fella. Wouldn't be surprised to see him spliced. This sounds like a nice cushy job to me. Come on, Charlie, let's get over to the house and see what's what. And much obliged to you, chum. Good night. What's our next move, Holmes? Let's go back to Briony Lodge, Watson, shall we? I'm undecided whether to continue my investigations there or to try to find out something about Mr. Jeffrey Norton, the barrister. Now, if he is just her lawyer and nothing else, it's more than likely she entrusted the photograph to his safekeeping. Hello. There's a cab waiting outside Miss Adler's house. Hurry, Watson. Maybe Miss Norton's. Look there. Yes, yes. Shh. Here comes a man hurrying down the pathway. Quick. Behind this post. Listen. Oi. Mr. Norton. Where to now? Drive like the devil. First to Gross and Hankies in Regan Street, and then to the Church of St. Monica in the Edgware Road. Half a sovereign if you do it in 20 minutes. Right you are, Miss Nunn. Try and signal a cab, Watson. We must follow them. Here comes one. No, no, it isn't. It's a private carriage. And Miss Adler's no doubt. Quickly, back in the post. Here she comes down the pathway. Where to, Miss Adler? The Church of St. Monica, John. And half a sovereign if you reach it in 20 minutes. <laughs> the game's afoot, Watson. Quick, we must get a cab and follow them. Here's a handsome. Cabby! Hey! Hey, cabby! Have you blows got enough money to take a cab? Here, half a sovereign for you, my man. Right you are. Where to, Governor? The Church of St. Monica in the Edgware Road. And another half sovereign for you if you get us there in 20 minutes. Now go! We'll hear the rest of Dr. Watson's story in just a moment. As a sincere thank you for your attendance of this production, our sponsor, Joshua Wall of The Crew Real Estate, would like to give you an opportunity to enter into a draw for a free prize giveaway. Yes, that's right, I said free prize giveaway. Participate by visiting thecrewrealestate.com slash Sherlock for a chance to win. Once again, that's thecrewrealestate.com slash Sherlock. Well, Doctor, did you and Sherlock Holmes reach that church inside the 20 minutes? Yes, we did. But the other carriages were there before us. Holmes went into the church after telling me to guard the outside. I must have waited for 10 minutes or more before Mr. Jeffrey Norton and Miss Adler came out, spoke a few words to each other and then left, then and there, in separate conveyances. A moment later, Holmes, still dressed as a stable hand, came striding out of the church and down the steps towards me. He was obviously very excited. What? What? Are they left? Yes, in separate cabs. I overheard him say that he was going back to his office. And she said, I shall drive out in the park at five o'clock as usual. Splendid. And come on, we'll return to Baker Street. 
What happened inside the church, Holmes? They were married. Married? Yes, of course. The ceremony would have been illegal if performed afternoon. That kind of for their wild dash to the church. Jump into the cab, old fellow. Where to now, Governor? 221B Baker Street. Oh, so they got married, eh? <laughs> yes, yes, and it may amuse you to know that I acted as a witness to the ceremony. You did? But how did that happen? Uh, their own witness had failed to appear, and I was dragged into the breach. The bride gave me the sovereign as a mento, and, you know, I think I'll wear it on my watch chain memory of this occasion. What an amazing situation. Things begin to look better for the king, don't they? I hope so, Watson. I hope so. But we can't afford to take any chances. I think the time is right for us to come to grips with the lady. Well, Holmes, now that we've eaten, perhaps you'll tell me your plan. Yes, with pleasure, my dear fellow. And while I'm so doing, I'll proceed with applying the makeup for my new disguise. <laughs> Another disguise? What's it to be this time? An amiable, simple-minded, non-conformist clergyman. Might be the most suited to my plan for entering Miss Adler's house. You're going to try and enter then? I must, my dear fellow. I'm sure the photograph is there. Miss Adler, or rather, Mrs. Norton, will return from her drive in the park at 6.30. We must be at Briony Lodge to meet her. And what then? You must leave that to me. I've already made my arrangements. There is only one thing on which I must insist, Watson. You must not interfere. Come what may. Do you understand? I'm to remain neutral? Yes. Now, there will be some unpleasantness, Watson. Do not join in. It will end in my being conveyed into the house. Now, as soon as I am able to, I shall open one of the windows. You are to watch from the outside. When I raise my hand, you will throw an object that I shall give you. At the same time, you will cry, fire. You follow me? Entirely. But what am I to throw? Oh, it's nothing very formidable. Here. Huh. Looks like a great big cigar. What is it? An ordinary plumber's smoke rocket fitted with a cap on either side to make it surf lighting. Your task is confined to throwing it through the window, and when you raise the cry of fire, it will be taken up by quite a number of people. Now, you may then walk to the end of the street, and I'll rejoin you in ten minutes. I hope I've made myself clear. Perfectly. Good. Now, old fellow, as soon as I've donned my clerical attire, let's be on our way. There's no time to be lost. Oh, it's nearly 6.30, Holmes. We've been pacing up and down in front of the house for half an hour now. I hope she does come back. I'm sure she will. There seem to be a lot of loafers hanging around her gate. All part of my conspiracy, old chap. I'll see them play their parts in a few minutes. You still think the photograph is inside the house? Yes. It's most unlikely she cares about her own person. Remember, the king told us it was a large framed picture. And also remember that she planned to use it within a few days. It must be where she can lay her hands on it. It must be inside the house. But her house has been burgled. Twice. Ugh, they had no idea how to look. How will you look? I won't. I'll get her to show it to me. Oh, she'll refuse. <laughs> she won't be able to. Shh. Here comes the carriage now, Watson. Remember, carry out my orders to the letter. You can trust me. Good luck. Blimey, <laughs> here comes the Duchess of Tiddlywinks. <laughs> Let's put out a carpet. She might get her tootsies wet. Oh, put a sock in it, Alfie. <laughs> Leave him alone. <laughs> She's no better than she ought to be. Please, Lady. please. Let me through. I, I live here. Well, ain't that nice. We'll all come in and have a cup of cocoa. Come move out of the way, please. Let the lady through. Mind your own business. Just because your collar's turned the wrong way round, you can't spoil our fun. That's right, Alfie. Keep your nose out of it, Parson. Stop shoving, will you? Please, don't fight about it. No, no, I tell you what. I... Stop molesting the lady this instant. Do ya? Then how would you like a fifth in the nose, Mr. Clergyman? Oh, he hit the poor man. And then he ran away. The coward. He hit his head, ma'am, as he fell. If you ask me, he's a bad. He's bleeding something terrible. Looks dazed. Can we bring him in, ma'am? I can't lie here in the street. Why, uh, of course. Bring him inside. Right you are, ma'am. Oh, steady, him, Ernie. Oh. Oh. Cool, poor fella. Do you see what happened to him, mister? Yes, I saw my good woman. Very convincing demonstration. What do you mean? Weren't you paid by a certain gentleman for this performance? Oh, you knows about it too. You must be a friend of Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Yes, I am. A nice gentleman. He give us five bob a piece for tonight's work. We ain't through yet, though. 
We've got to start yelling fire when somebody tells us. I'm that somebody, my dear lady. There's Mr. Holmes now. He's inside the house. Yes, he's opening a window. Now he's raising his hand. That's my signal. Now, to throw the rocket. There we are. Fire! 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 Holmes, there you are. You, you have the photograph? No, but I know where it is. She showed me. Just as I told you she would. Well, I, I'm still in the dark. But there's no mystery, poor chap. When my accomplices started the row on the street, I had a little red moist paint. My good friend Alfie pretended to strike me. I clapped my hand to my head and fell down. It's an old theatre trick. Yes, I understand that. But how did my throwing the rocket help you? It was all important, my dear fellow. When a woman thinks her house is on fire, her instinct is at once to rush for the thing that she values most. Now a married woman grabs her baby. An unmarried one reaches for a jewelry box. In this case, it was the photograph. Where was it? In a recess in the living room, just above the right-hand bell pull. I caught a glimpse of it, she drew it out. When I made it known the fire was a false alarm, she replaced the photograph immediately. As soon as I was able to, I advised her that I was feeling well enough to leave. You didn't take the photograph, then? No, I felt that all precipitants of that stage would ruin everything. What do we do now? We drive to the Langham Hotel and inform His Majesty what has happened. Then we drive with him here. And after that, the case is closed. Any lodge, Your Majesty? I am all impatience. You are certain the photograph will be there, Mr. Holmes. I have every reason to believe so, Your Majesty. I must confess, this is going to be something of an ordeal. Then I suggest you let me do the talking, Your Majesty. I think I know how to handle the lady. Mr. Sherlock Holmes, I believe. Yes, I am, Mr. Holmes. How did you know? My mistress told me you would be likely to call. She left for the continent with her husband. You mean she's left England? Never to return. Then the papers. And the photograph. Oh, all is lost. We'll soon see. Follow me. She said you'd be looking for something. I hope you find it. Here, this was the bell rope. Sign panels behind it. Uh-huh. Here it is. Is... Is the photograph there, Mr. Holmes? There is a photograph, Your Majesty, but it's a, it's a photograph of the lady alone. And a letter. It's addressed to me. What does it say, Holmes? My, My dear, dear Mr. Sherlock, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, Holmes, you really, you really did, it, did very. it very well. Until after the fire alarm, I had no suspicion. But then, when I realized how I had betrayed myself, I began to think. I had been warned that if the king employed an agent, he would certainly employ you. May I congratulate you on your disguise as a dear old clergyman. Great Scott! She was much more clever than you thought, Holmes. Yeah, yeah, go on. What else does it say? My husband and I both thought that the best recourse was flight, so you will find the nest empty. As to the photograph of the king and myself, his majesty may rest in peace. Oh, thank goodness for that. I love and am loved by a better man than he. I leave another photograph, however that he might care to possess. And I remain, dear Mr. Sherlock Holmes, very, very truly, truly yours, yours Irene Norton. Me. What a magnificent woman! She fooled me completely! I, I never saw... <laughs> never before her... Uh, yes, of course. I'm sorry, Your Majesty. I apologize. I'm afraid I wasn't able to bring your business to a more successful conclusion. On the contrary, my dear sir. Nothing could be more successful. I know that Irene's word is inviolate. The incriminating photograph is now as safe as if it were in the fire. Well, I'm glad to hear your majesty say so. I am immensely indebted to you. Pray tell in what way I can reward you. Uh, this, this barrel ring that I wear. I, I should be proud to... If your majesty would, there is something I would value even more highly. You have but to name it. That photograph. Irene's photograph? But certainly... However, you must let me give you something more substantial. No, no, Your Majesty. This, this is something I shall treasure my whole life. This, and a gold sovereign given to me by the lady's hand. They will remind me that I was once tricked, bested by the woman. The woman. Well, Doctor, 
What a woman, that Miss Adler. Or should I say, Mrs. Norton? A singular character. Tonight's production of Sherlock Holmes and a Scandal in Bohemia was brought to you by Ichthys Theatre Productions, directed and edited by Martin Smith, original theme music by Stuart Smith. This production proudly sponsored by Joshua Wall of The Crew Real Estate. Are you or someone you know considering buying, selling, or investing in real estate? If so, better call Wall. Tonight's show featured Malachi Fox as Sherlock Holmes, Bruce Farley as Dr. Watson, Ralph Tootin as The King, Marissa Kate Wilson as Irene Adler, Catherine Taylor as Hattie, Anna Carter as Alfie, Lynn McEntee as The Maid, Joseph A. Seabock as The Bartender, Jared Lawrence as The First Cabman, Trent Matthews as The Second Cabman, Nevin Speakman as Norton, Daniel Ryan Astley as Pat, George Katsandras as The Coachman, Joe Gull as Ernie, David Faulkner Rundle as Bert, and I'm Rob Kerway. Please support Ichthys Theatre Productions with a donation to our GoFundMe campaign. Visit GoFundMe.com and search for Ichthys Theatre Productions, or visit our Facebook page for the link. All donations are greatly appreciated. Please join us on Friday, July 9th at 7pm for our next adventure, Sherlock Holmes and the Adventure of the Tolling Bell.